Now, today we're talking about prophecy. So we've been in the series called Hearing God, and I wanted to land the series with prophecy. Just so you know, you can't teach prophecy in like a one quick little session and like cover all of it. So uh, this is really just to kind of lean into one general aspect of what I'm gonna be talking about with prophecy and I'll kind of get into it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna land with. I felt like the Lord wanted this to happen and in the first service, it's pretty awesome. Um, one of the things that happened to me was that I have uh, grown up in an environment in which it was uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God his Holy Word. And the Holy Spirit lived in the third verse of the hymns. You know what I mean? And so if you got a wild hair on some Sunday, we might sing that one. But, but I never really understood the Holy Spirit. Right? I, just, I just didn't fully understand the Holy Spirit. So what that did was it created some confusion and some fear and some trepidation. Like, I don't know what's going to happen here. So when God starts to move, I'm like, woo, I don't know. And so what happened for me was that somebody laid their hands, my wife actually, laid her hands on my head, began to pray, and it just removed these blockages where all of a sudden I was excited for everything. I don't care what's going on. Let's, let's, yes, Lord, all of it, you know? Uh, so somebody's shouting yes louder. You know, somebody's like, you know, back in the back waving flags, come on, you know, get it. You know, like somebody needs to take a glory lap. Let's do it. You know, whatever. I'm all for it. If it's in Jesus name, you know what I mean? So like, um, I'm excited about that and I want that for you. So at the end of the service, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right here in the center. And I want you, if you need to have something prayed off of you so that you can just step into the Holy Spirit, step into prophecy, step into anything that's held you back. I want you to meet me. One of the things that, uh, that I just want to remind you of, sometimes we, we have to close the door to the things that have hurt us and open the doors to the things that, that God wants for us, right? And Jesus says, I am the door. I am the way. And today I want us to realize that we're going to walk in the way of Jesus and we want everything that scripture says that we have available to us. And you're going you're gonna to realize that's going to push your boundaries and sometimes your comfort zone, okay? So uh, one thing I want to start out with too also is I'm excited about what God is doing in and around the prophetic, right? I'm very excited, especially for someone who's like, man, I didn't grow up with it. I'm, I'm even more excited, right? Like, let's just more, like, let's just all of it. And, and what I love is that God is uh, d- raising up people who are desiring to hear God speak, right? Hopefully this series maybe even piqued your interest. I want to hear God speak more, right? I want to, I want to hear from the Lord. I want him to speak to me. I want him to speak through his word, through his voice, through just in, in me and through me. I want it all, you know? And so what I've also seen is that I sense people are generally more open to the Holy Spirit than I was as a kid, right? You think so? I think so. I, you know, honestly, I think it's because of Bethel, right? Bethel worship has produced some of the greatest like worship songs, man. You're just getting after your worship and you're like, yes, who did this? Bethel again. You're like, ah, you know, but I remember thinking back not like that long ago that like Bethel produced great worship and everybody was like, yeah, we love that music. Be like, but I would never go to their church. They're weird. You know, you're like, (laughs) but I, but here's what I think. I'm like, what's funny is we love the worship that is produced out of that culture. And yet we don't want to be a part of that culture. Yet, if you want that culture of worship here, you've got to be willing to step into all that God has for us. Right? So I'm like, man, bring it Lord. Come on. Like, I want that level of going after Jesus, just getting like, just singing and shouting and whatever, just worship, just get it all Lord, you know, and then watch people get healed. Come on. The Lord's still healing today. Right? Come on now, I believe, and God does some miraculous healings. I've, I've spoke to so many people that, that God has spoken through and just uh, allowed for us to lay hands on someone and, and to watch it. Hey, watch this, you ready? If you've ever laid hands on somebody and saw them get healed, raise your hand. All right, now look around. How amazing is that, right? Come on, more, right? Like we want more of this, like what God is doing through his spirit in the earth. But all right, so let's talk about prophetic words. We're going to be st- talking specifically about giving and receiving prophetic words. Now, a prophetic word is when God gives someone who's filled with the Holy Spirit a glimpse into your future or your here and now. The word is to encourage and call you into what God wants for you. This word is meant to propel you to your next and possibly give you some practical steps to build your hope, certainty, and peace that God is with you. This is what prophetic words are for, right? Right? Now, I'm specifically going to be talking about uh, um, prophetic words that are given to your here and now. I'm not really talking as much about the futuristic prophetic words. I'm really going to lean into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, where we're going to dig into some of this, and we're going to talk about kind of what I think is one of the most primary ways of prophetic words to give and to receive, okay? Um, I have been given prophetic words. 
I've, I have loved every one of them, man. I've had words where, where, where God sent me into my next. He just gave me confident to take that step into my next. I've been given words that, that reminded me to keep my mouth shut and stand still. You ever had one of those, you know? Uh, I feel like sometimes the Lord probably should deliver more of those words to many of us, right? Uh, And then I've also had these words that have allowed for me in the midst of a really difficult time when I felt like I couldn't hear from the Lord. Somebody gave me the courage. uh, It just spoke a word and I heard the Lord and and I just knew it's going to be okay. And I think those are just so needed in the church. So needed in our church. Not just our church. Remember our church, the church. As I was writing this, and I, and I kind of got into this uh, First Corinthians here, Paul also wrote in Colossians, and he says that we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. And when the Spirit gives these kinds of words, they, they end up producing, he goes on, he says, they bear fruit, they grow in knowledge, and we're being strengthened. We have endurance and patience. We are joy-filled, and this is to bring us out of the darkness into the light. This is the, the purpose and the, and, the, and the power of giving a prophetic word to someone so that they can, they can stand and lean on Jesus, even through those difficult times, to strengthen us, comfort us. I thought about this this week, too, was that... Um, when you get to the end of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, you realize there's 400 plus years until we hit Matthew, until actually John the Baptist arrives on the scene. And as I was praying into um, just us as a church this week, I started realizing, I think there's a lot of people who feel like God has just silenced himself because we, we kind of compare, maybe we don't even know it. You know, the Israelites had the Old Testament at the time. They had the Torah, they had the prophets, they had, they had the Ten Commandments, they had, they had the Word, right? They had some of that stuff in the Old Testament. They didn't maybe have it in the form like we have it now, in a nice little leather-bound book with it all put together, but they had it, right? Um, some of them had memorized it, but God was not speaking until John the Baptist shows up, and he begins to speak the kingdom of God, repent, turn, come to Jesus. I just I was thinking about this this week, about how many people maybe have said, God doesn't speak anymore. We just don't believe that God would actually speak to us. We have this Bible, but we don't even truly realize that the Bible is the word of God. You know, in John chapter one, it says, Jesus is the word. The word was with God. The word is God. He he took on flesh. So the word took on flesh, Jesus Christ here on the earth to dwell with us. That tells me something very clearly. Jesus has something to say to you. If he's called the word, That means he's probably trying to speak something to us. And you look at the life and the ministry of Jesus. He didn't hand out pamphlets. He shared his word. He spoke. And then he said, when I leave, it's going to be for your benefit because I'm sending the Holy Spirit to come and what? Remind you, to speak to you, to encourage you, to build you up, to speak through you to other people. So don't believe that you're in a season of silence, a life of silence, just distant from God. I believe that today God is bringing breakthrough so that you can hear him speak. I believe it. I believe it because I've been through quiet seasons. I've been through those times where you're like, I don't know if he's talking. Here's what happens now. When I, when I feel like the Lord is getting quiet, I just shut up with him. It doesn't mean he left me. It just means he's sitting with me. Sometimes you can hug somebody and it's better to hug than it is to keep talking. You ever go through a bad situation? Somebody wants to just keep talking. You're like, just shut up and hug, please. You know, like. <laughs> but when you're not used to hearing God speak, you may not always be as open as you think you would be. So this morning, I want you to be open to hearing from the Lord, trusting him. You have the Holy Spirit. When you accepted Jesus Christ, you were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God now resides in you to help you to know I can confirm that, yes. We're gonna dig into this, but before we dig into it, here's what I wanna do. I wanna take 1 Corinthians 14. I'm gonna read some of this to you. I'm not gonna put it on screen because we're talking about hearing God, okay? So I'm just gonna speak these words. I want you to, you can close your eyes. I want you just to hear because I'm gonna take just a few verses and I didn't wanna just stick on one verse here and there. I want you to take into context what's being said here to get the full weight of what um, Paul's trying to do here in this letter, okay? So now as I read this, just take it in, okay? 1 Corinthians 14, 1. You can read along if you want to, if you have your Bible. But I'm going to read it to us. I'm going to pray first. So Father God, we're here before you to read your word. So right now we just, 
We just open up our ears. Holy Spirit, come and fill us up with your word. Open our ears, open our minds, give us hearts to receive. We want to hear you speak today. In Jesus' name. Here we go. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, Brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds such as the pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager for the gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. Amen. Now, the common theme here is to build up the church. Did you hear how many times Paul said prophecy is for building up the church, for building up the church, for building up the church? And what I can imagine is that Paul is putting pen to paper. He's thinking about the church in his day. You know what was happening to the church in his day? They were being murdered for their faith. Not just, oh, you're a Christian. No, no, they're being murdered for their faith. The fact that somebody gave their life to Jesus meant everything is now on the line. Can you imagine what kind of encouragement and strengthening they're probably gonna need? They weren't walking around with a, you know, a Gideon's Bible in their back pocket, you know? They didn't have one at every hotel. They didn't have, everybody have like the big family Bible that they had open. They had the Holy Spirit speaking, encouraging, building up. And Paul, thankfully, writing letters that now we see as inspired word of God that we get to put together in the, in the book. It's amazing. But back then, man, they're just having to pass these letters around like, oh my gosh, let's lean into the spirit. Let's prophesy for each other. Let's build each other up. And I can imagine when he's writing this and he's talking about, man, we want the church to be built up. Right now, do you feel like you need a little bit of building up in your spirit? You feel like you need some encouraging words? Maybe some comfort? Maybe even a little bit of edification, like a little, little, little push maybe here and there. I think so. I think we face our own challenges that, that are different and unique, but they're still challenges in and of themselves. Sometimes it's uh, one of the biggest problems in the church today. I told somebody this this week. You know what the biggest problem affecting the church today is? Youth sports. I'm just throwing that out there. A little nugget. Sorry. Didn't mean to offend anybody, but like youth sports, like for real, like in Texas, we're crazy. I mean, Paul didn't write about it, but I sense it in my spirit. You know, when people are out of church for, you know, months on end and we came to church to help our children stay like built up and, you know, we want to teach them the way of the Lord. And you're like, yeah, but we're going to be out a big chunk of time because little Timmy's going to be a major leaguer. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm just, I just, there's a caution to like that. Not to, how about uh, just... Eh, apathy. Church is church. I grew up in the church. VBS, who went to VBS as a kid, right? Like literally everybody in the Bible Belt. You go up north and you're like, you ever heard of VBS? They're like, what are you even talking about? Down south, the problem with us down south in the Bible Belt, you know what the problem is? We got enough of Jesus that we don't need him anymore. It's like, it's like a, like a thing, an injection, but it's not an injection. What is the thing everybody's having a cow about right now? The, Vaccine. Yeah. You know what they do with the vaccine? Listen, I'm sorry. They give you just enough of the virus 
to cure you of the virus in case it attacks, right? It's like, we get just enough of Jesus down here. The reason I stumbled on this is because this is what David Fish was saying. I literally stole this from David Fish. Everybody act like it was mine though, okay? Like, did you hear what Joey said? But yeah, that's the problem is like apathy. Like, ugh, okay, we, we're a church, we're fine. Man, we have our own problems and we need the Lord to speak. We need him to speak to our spirit. So let's start 1 Corinthians 14, one. It says this, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially, what? Prophecy. Follow the way of love straight out the gate, man. I'm telling you right now, follow the way of love. You know what this is really telling us? That before you start getting prophetic words, you better have your heart right. Before you start trying to speak words that God has given you, you better make sure your heart is following a particular way. You're following love. Jesus loved people well, and he could speak words of edification and building because his heart was in the right place of love. Sometimes our heart's not always in the right place. You know, if you back up one chapter in 1 Corinthians 13, this is the one that everybody loves to read at weddings. I've literally done it. So I'm, you know, saying it about myself too. The problem is it's actually talking about setting up prophecy for us. It's not talking about your marriage. It's talking about prophecy. It's talking about the spirit moving and how we have to posture ourselves in a place of love. So think of it through that lens, right? If you think of it like that, prophecy starts with love. So love is kind. It doesn't envy. It does not boast and it's not proud. The problem is that sometimes people prophesy from pride. I want you all to know that I hear from the Lord, right? And sometimes we don't come from this place of like, hey, do they actually need to hear the word? Didn't ask. I heard it. I just spoke it. That's pride. So, so we have to be very careful when we try to speak to someone else a, a word that God put on our heart that we submit it to the Lord. It's his word, not yours. I'll probably say that a lot today, by the way. Love does not dishonor others, right? In other words, your job is not in the Lord to be the humbler. You know what I mean? Your job is not to knock somebody down with a prophetic word. And sometimes we do this because the Lord gives words of knowledge, these prophetic words of knowledge. Sometimes you'll know something like the Lord will put on your heart that they're struggling with something. You're not to declare it so that everybody in the room knows their sin. You're not supposed to take them down a notch. You're supposed to speak edify, building up. So sometimes if you go up to somebody and just say, you got an addiction to porn, heard it from the Lord. You're like, that may be true, but I'd appreciate that the church not just heard about it. You know what I mean? Like the wife is like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm trying, buddy. <laughs> Love isn't self-seeking or easily angered and keeps no record or wrong. That just makes me think again, if, if heaven's not keeping track of your sin right now, because you've been forgiven, why is the prophet supposed to call out your sin in front of everybody, right? So let's be careful. I'll keep going. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. In other words, a prophetic word will always align with the word of God. If you hear a prophetic word that doesn't align with this word, you just throw it away. It's like trash, gone, because it didn't come from the Lord. If it's not in alignment with the word, and listen, if somebody's getting fresh knowledge, it's probably heretical. You know what I mean? Like uh, if nobody has heard it for 2000 years, okay, you may want to submit that back to the Lord again and just say, Holy Spirit, help me know. Um, so that's always fun. Love always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres. It's to build you up and point you to Jesus. Prophetic word is meant to get you to Jesus. Not to look on the prophet or, to, or to, to realize how awesome this person is because they got words. It's to point us to Jesus. And guess what? Love never, what? Fails. I love this part because, man, my first thought here is that prophecy, is, 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 it's, a, it's not that the prophetic word that we give, is go, it won't fail. Because guess what? Sometimes our flesh gets in the way. One time I, when I was really trying to practice giving prophetic words, you know, because you have to actually practice this, right? I, and I always wrestled with that. I kind of talked about that a little bit to some friends a minute ago. It was like uh, the idea of practicing the prophetic never made sense to me. I thought, well, if the Lord gives it to you, you don't need to practice it, right? There's no reason to practice. This is just the Lord gave it, you deliver it. The problem is we expect all the musicians who play on Sunday to practice. It, it is a gift that the Lord gave them, but they better practice or if they come in here, it isn't gonna be very good. Why would we not do the same thing with other gifts? Preaching, I should be practicing, right? I should practice this. If you wanna be good at, at, at evangelizing and sharing the gospel, you should probably practice. Find a friend, let's just talk about it. You practice these gifts so that you can get stronger in them and you can hear from the Lord. So I practiced one time with uh, our, one of our pastors, Melissa Meyer here, and I was giving her a prophetic word. The Lord gave me two sentences. And then when I went back and watched the Marco Polo that I sent her, it had like 50 sentences. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I was like, I'm sorry. Ignore everything after the first two sentences. That was all me. And I realized I allowed for myself to try to really get in there and kind of add some stuff to it. My flesh got in the way. I was trying to do it from a, a good place, but I realized that's not what I felt like the Lord said. It was just this part. 
Now you get to take that and he'll download the rest of the part. So I, I just wanted to like, let you know, like love never fails means prophecy won't fail, right? The, the prophet, I don't think that God's going to stop prophesying until his church comes home. And then we just get to be face to face with the Lord, right? I think he's going to continue to speak because he's doing it around us in all sorts of ways. God loves to highlight people. You ever, have you ever met somebody, seen somebody and they just, they just keep coming back into your vision. It's like the grocery store. You can't avoid them. They're always there in front of you. Oh, how did I get in line with this person? Like, ah, uh, you know, like the Lord's probably trying to speak to you about them. I bet you're supposed to be speaking to them. Let the Lord highlight somebody. They're not walking around with a beam of light on them. It's just, something in you keeps acknowledging the fact that this person's here and I keep seeing them everywhere I go. It's that darn bright yellow shirt again. <laughs> oh man, I wonder what I'm supposed to do. And we just ignore it and move on. But I believe the Lord wants to speak to people when they highlight. Okay, so here's the eagerly desire gifts of the spirit. Now, wait a minute. Here's, here's the part that always bothered me, right? You read scripture and it says eagerly desire. I feel like the church is like, we sometimes, maybe if we get it just right, we might think about allowing for the gifts of the spirit to come as long as it fits what we hope it's gonna be like. No, no, it just says eagerly desire gifts of the spirit. You don't get to choose which one. You just desire them all, right? We as a church should eagerly desire the gifts of the spirit. If one of them makes you uncomfortable, guess what you should do? Eagerly desire that gift. I, here's the problem. I think prophecy we're okay with. Speaking in tongues, most of us are like, now hang on just a second. This is not a tongues message, but it is definitely mentioned when Paul's talking about it. Paul's speaking to the church, and if you, if you do some historical context and digging up, you realize that the church in Corinth was really, they were speaking in tongues all over the place. And he's like, listen, that's not building up the church. We need to just kind of tamper down a little bit of the tongues and let's do some prophecy so that it's edifying and building up the church. Y'all need some encouragement, you know? Like, like let's, let's focus on that. But some of us have been in and around places where we kind of got burned on speaking in tongues, laying out of hands and, and prophecy, Right? You can say, it's okay. America took a shot in the arm when it came to the prophetic, okay? I can explain it. You ready? Don't shoot the messenger, okay? For some reason, when politics get involved, it's like prophets came out of the woodwork. And all of a sudden, I hear prophetic words everywhere. None of them were pointing to Jesus. All of them were pointing to Trump. I'm just, I'm just now listen, I'm not taking political sides just hear what I'm saying, okay? Just what I'm saying is that if prophetic words are designed to build up the church, it really sounded like prophetic words were starting to build up the Republican Party. And here's what I want you to know. Jesus did a really good job of offending every political party when he was here, okay? So when you take the gospel in its entirety and you look at the life of Jesus, he is not going to be hanging out with political parties, like promoting them. Okay. And it, the prophetic words are meant to build up the church. I, what I'm not I'm just, just, I know where I am at. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're in Barker County. All right. This is why I'm going to, you know, don't, don't, don't get upset yet. What my, my goal is that we would start to learn and decipher prophetic words. Because when people start to prophesy and they walk out and they're wearing like an American flag robe and they've got a cash app symbol down at the bottom, you may want to take a little pump the brakes moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all are laughing because y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Just, just give it a second, you know? Do you feel edified from all those words? We should eagerly desire. Here's what I mean by that. Don't let that ruin you. Eric and I, we lived in Kansas City for a while, and when they, they have casinos in Kansas City, right? And on like Friday or Saturday nights, they used to do like this American Idol thing going on where they would let people come and they would sing like karaoke music. And, and so we loved to watch it because they would actually broadcast this stuff, right? These people were terrible at singing, but they had a lot of liquid courage, you know? So they would go in there. And man, they would just like, boy, the, they'd turn on that, like, like the band or whatever. And you see the people like it, most of it was horrendous, but you know, like one of my favorite songs is superstition, you know, like, like I'm not even going to try it, but like, uh, I love that song, dude. It's so much fun. That's like my go-to. If we ever go karaoke, that's the one, you know what I mean? Um, and so like this person comes out and they sing the song and they butcher it, you know, like, Ooh, they butchered it. You know, that was bad. You ever seen somebody dress butcher a song? Like, did you at that moment go, that song is ruined forever. I'll never listen to it again. No. It just made you really appreciate it the next time you heard it, right? That's what I'm saying about prophetic words, though. We cannot allow for when somebody butchers it, you know, and just, just be like, it ruined it, I'm done. Close the door, no prophecy. Because the Bible says to eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, and then it goes on and says, especially prophecy. 
especially prophecy. So why prophecy? Mike Bickle says it this way. He says, the Holy Spirit gives us prophetic impressions, not so that we can be known as prophets, but in order to help other people. Man, the church should be all about giving prophetic words to helping each other, encouraging each other, building each other up. It's beautiful. And that's where you see it in 1 Corinthians 14, 3. It says, but the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and their comfort. That is so needed. Who needs a prophetic word this morning? Now, some of you, I think, might be liars, which means you may need a little extra. I do. I mean, good season, bad season, any season, I'll take prophetic words all day. Let's go. Like, I just, I love it when people just pour into you and give you these words. Now, here's what it means. Strengthening, or, or even in some, you'll see it in some texts, it'll say edification. So it's edification is like the erecting of a building, okay? It's literally these two words put together, to build and house. It's literally building something up into maturity. So when someone is strengthening you and building you up, they're speaking into your life to build you up. I have this all the time. Our, our, uh, our women's pastor this morning, Mama Kim, sent me a text after the first service and gave me an encouraging word that just, it felt like it built me up. You know, and I was like, oh, I, I needed that today. I, I really did, you know what I mean? And so like, sometimes you just need somebody to just look at you and go like, you know what? God's so proud of you. He, he's just proud of what you're doing. He's just gonna continue to pour into your life. You're like, yes, I just feel like, I, I just wanna go after the Lord. You know, sometimes you'll get a prophetic word and you just wanna read the Bible all over again. You're like, that's probably a good prophetic word. You know, like, a good encouraging word that makes you want to go to church? Yeah, that's probably a good one. Now, exhortation, the next one is this. The second is a, uh, it motivates to strengthen, right? But there's this, like, this emphatic urge in, in an exhortation to basically brace you or to plead with you, to, to challenge you, to rebuke you, even some consoling. Now, listen, when, you, when a rebuking happens, uh, keep in mind, rebuking is not like this public, let's throw somebody sent out. It's usually like a, a relationship that's been built up that you have permission to speak into. And I think of James with Peter. He says, hey, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me three times. You know, like, this is, you're like, oh, that was a prophetic word into Peter. Jesus literally is telling Peter, hey, because you, you, why? Because Peter's pride got in the way. Remember what he told him for this? I'll die for you, Jesus. He's like, I got a word for you, okay? Like, be careful. And I think what he was doing in this moment, he's preparing Peter's heart to know you're about to go through something really, really difficult. But you know what Jesus did? He came back and redeemed it. Yeah. Came back, do you love me? three times, denied three times, Jesus builds him back up. Again, we, we, don't, we don't try to tear somebody down because we're not the humblers, right? It's the Holy Spirit. And I'm pretty sure if you ever feel like a, a word like that, you might want to just submit it to the Lord and some other people, um, not to other people, but just take it to the Lord and, and really know, is that really what God wants to say to them? Be very cautious. Um, but edification is, is, I thought of it this way. I felt like sometimes uh, some sort of edification to draw you into is like sometimes uh, somebody might give you a word. They're like, man, I've been praying. I feel like the Lord wants me to tell you. Like the, you, there's like, I feel like there's a newness, like a new job maybe coming. Uh, and it's like, oh, cool. Okay, so like it's kind of this bracing up, getting me ready for what to move into. Um, something like that could work. Or, or even a, like the Lord's calling. I feel like the Lord's calling you to a fast, Joe. You know? And it's like, I'm not really meaning that. I'm just, that's the text I wrote. But that's, that's what I'm talking about, right? I don't know. Maybe he is. What do you think, bro? I don't know. Uh, but then the third one is comfort, right? To really comfort somebody to just come in. Here's what I love. One of, my, one of my favorite ways to give prophetic words is to allow for the Lord. Now listen to the way I put this, okay? The Holy Spirit in me acknowledges someone else in the room and wants me to remind them that God loves them. And then I go to that person and I say, hey, I just want you to know the Lord has highlighted you to me and I feel like he wants you to know that he loves you. Now, you could try to dismiss this as not a prophetic word, but it's just something out of the word, right? The truth is, the word that I would declare has to come into alignment with this word, right? But the Holy Spirit in me begins to stir something up in me and points me into a direction. The Holy Spirit's like, that one. Here's the beautiful part. It's a two-way street. The Holy Spirit now in them is going to receive the word that I'm about to declare, and God does some miraculous, crazy things in them. I mean, it's impressive what God does with our words just by saying, I love you. They hear a lot more than that. It's like it opens up the, the floodgates for the Holy Spirit to begin to move in their life. So you would do really well to just say, Lord, I want to give some comfort to some people. So Holy Spirit, highlight somebody to me. All right, I found them. Now, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to them? 
I did that one time. I think I've told you before, but I met a guy at a gas station. The Lord took me there, highlighted the person. I went up to him and said, hey, I felt like the Lord wanted me to pray with you because he's been hearing your prayer. And the guy's like, I don't believe in God. I was like, well, too bad because he's hearing your prayer and you need to tell me what's going on. And sure enough, guess what? He had been praying to a God he didn't believe in. And he sent, God sent me to comfort him so that he knew when he was laying in bed at night praying for his kids, God was listening. Well, that's a comforting word. 1 Corinthians 14, 6. Now, brothers and sisters, first of all, I love Paul referring to us as brothers and sisters. Man, we're a family. They said, always just brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. We should look at each other like brothers and sisters. Now, how many brothers and sisters fight? Mm hmm. Okay. But somebody outside the family picks on that brother or sister? Oh, it's on. You know what I mean? So church, we got we to gotta keep in mind we are brothers and sisters. If I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? Word of instruction. Prophecy is meant and designed to benefit the one that's hearing. Here's what I mean. Here's what I think that Paul's kind of getting at. You ever, you ever met people that talk in these lofty terms? Like when you go to deliver a word to somebody, and, and you don't have to get into old English, you know what I mean? And you don't have to like sound like you're a prophet of the old and you don't have to use weird spiritual terms like, you know, like the conduits of heaven opening up the, the floodgates of this and that and the lights piercing through the this and that. And you're, you're like, there's a bunch of weird kind of things that somebody who's not really familiar with your Christianese would be like, I don't know what you're talking about right now. You're like, God loves you. Like there, I got it. Okay. Cause it's meant to build them up and encourage them. So they should understand what you're trying to say to them. So if God speaks to you in that weird kind of crazy way, cause that's how he talks to you break it down for half a second and deliver it in a way that they'll understand. Here's what I love about this church. There are, we have some intercessors that hear from the Lord really well. They hear words of knowledge. They hear prophetic things all the time and they submit them to me and we get to deliver them. And sometimes they're, they're interesting and they're different. And, but like the Lord will take them and we deliver them in a way that maybe you can understand and grasp. And that's the beautiful part. Guess what? I don't have to acknowledge their name. You know why? Because it's God's word, not ours. That's the beautiful part. Right? Prophecy is just something to be treasured that it's his. So let's look at this. It says, the brother says, if I come to you speaking in tongues, what good will it be to you uh, unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge, prophecy, or word of instruction? Here's what I want to do. I want to give you just three quick warnings real quick surrounding prophetic words, okay? First one is this. Impulse isn't impressive, okay? Here's what I mean by that. Some people, we, we, you'll, you'll hear from the Lord and you feel like the whole room has to know about it right now. Give me a microphone, that's an impulse. Sometimes your flesh will get in the way, okay? And sometimes just because it's burning in your heart doesn't mean everybody in the world has to know it right now. Sometimes those words that are burning on your heart is because, man, I'm just so excited. I'm hearing from the Lord. You know, he's like, write it down, soak in it for a minute. 1 Corinthians 14, 31 says, for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. I love that word in turn. In other words, it's not gonna be chaotic, in other words, if I'm like, hey, we're just gonna have somebody come, let's give prophetic words. And everybody starts shouting. No, no, the Holy Spirit doesn't take away your self-control, <laughs> okay? That's one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control because when he delivers a word in your heart and you can deliver it, you don't go all wild and crazy. You're like, I just had to get it out of my system. You're like, no, you didn't. You have self-control. Let's pump the brakes. And guess what? If you have a prophetic word in this house, you have to submit to the house. You have to submit them to the church. Like you have to be able to give this to the elders and the staff for us to listen and say, hey, is this a tested, true and worthy word to be delivered to the congregation? I can't just hand the microphone out to everybody. I actually had somebody come up here one time and try to take the mic from me. That was kind of an interesting Sunday. It's been a while though, so it's all right. Uh, number two, this is the other one. Prophecy isn't performance. That's just your flesh and your pride getting in the way. You gotta be very careful. The word is meant to be helpful, not to build you up. And then this one is accountability all around. We have to be accountable to the words that we give and to the words we receive. Did you hear that? If you give a prophetic word, you should be open to receive feedback. In other words, if I give somebody a word and they don't receive it, hey, that's okay, that's okay. If I gave a word and it turns out I missed it, guess what? That's okay. Hey, I apologize. Sorry about that. Like, I'm just trying to do my best. I'm practicing. I'm listening to the Lord, encouraging. If you received a word, you don't have to take it all of a sudden like, well, it's gospel. You test it. The Holy Spirit in you will hear that word and will work with you and to test it. Guess what? You can share it with other wise people. Hey, here's the word that I heard in my life. They told me to quit my job and run away. Is that, does that sound like a strong word? Listen, the, <laughs> that actually happens a lot. I felt like the Lord told me to quit, tell you to quit your job. You're like, ah, uh, I don't know. Like, I kind of need income. Like, let me just take that to the Lord real quick before I just jump on that bandwagon. 
So sometimes you've got to take these words and sit and process through them. Be like, no, I don't think that was it. You have to do it like this humbly in love with each other. We're family, brothers and sisters. It's okay if somebody messes up. First Thessalonians 5, 19 through 22 says this, do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. Sometimes people out there to give prophetic words to manipulate you. Those really aren't prophetic words. Those are evil words. How are you going to know? Test them. But here's the don't quench the spirit. Man, when I read that, I thought of a, like a faucet. When you turn that faucet on, that water just comes rushing out. I remember as a kid, you ever, you ever grow up drinking out of the water hose? You ever turn on the water hose and just as soon as it pumps out, you put your mouth on it? You can burn your lips right off your face, man. In Texas, man, it's 110. That water hose water heats up quick. You got to wait till that refreshing cold well water comes up out of there. You know what I mean? So you got to test the water. You know what I mean? But if I, if I just put my finger in it's hot and I just turn it off, I'm just going to quench it. I'm the one that's starving. I'm the one that's thirsty. But because it wasn't what I thought at first, I turned it off. And we've got to just open up and just receive from the Lord. And if anything, if, if you've ever been in a situation, if you were raised in a denomination that, you know, that tried to push you over, they tried to force you to speak in tongues, they try to deliver words like a thousand words for you every day. Listen, people don't need a thousand prophetic words a day, okay? Like one a week will suffice, you know what I mean? Like, if, if that, like we're, we're good. Like, we just want to be built up and encouraged and just like, this is what we need is the Lord to speak. But if that was you, I want to close the door on that chapter of your life. I want you to realize that there is a way of love that we should follow. We don't want to quench the spirit. And listen, the Holy Spirit, it's going to be real hard to quench the spirit, okay? He's moving, he's moving in strong and powerful ways. Just because one Sunday you decide not to walk down front because you're a little nervous about it doesn't mean you quench the spirit and you're done. I just want us to get and posture ourselves to say, yes, Lord all of it. First Corinthians 14 keeps going. It says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. How many of you are like, I, was, I got nervous. Be eager to prophesy and don't forget, forbid speaking in tongues. I don't know where you line up in prophecy or speaking in tongues this morning, but I know what scripture says. And I take my theology, I take what my view of God and, and, and the view of the world and how I'm supposed to live in it, and I align it with scripture. And if scripture tells me not to forbid speaking in tongues and to desire, eagerly desire, not just like kind of ease into it. No, it says eagerly desire the gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy. Then that means I want it all. That means I want to just open that faucet up and I want to just receive, Lord. If something's ever hurt you or hindered you or has caused you any kind of block today, I want to pray over you. I want you to be healed in Jesus' name so that you have a heart to receive all that God wants to do. He wants to speak through you to you. And I want you to just be willing and excited to receive because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit in you to guard you and to protect you. It's okay. Do people mess up? Yes. Man, you know how many people would be in church if we left every time somebody hurt us? Nobody would be here. But you keep coming back. Amen. I want us to be excited about the gifts and the fruit and the prophecy that God wants to speak to us. I want us to know that it's good and it's healthy, but it's also done in an orderly and fitting way. The problem with that phrase is the minute I say orderly and fitting way, as soon as that's what the scripture says, you immediately go to what you think is supposed to be orderly and fitting, right? You ever been to a kindergarten classroom? Oh, well, there's order in there. It's just not the way that you would like it to possibly have some order. And it's not just because they're children. You ever been into a senior high school sitting in an English class. There's not a lot of order. It's not very fitting. I want God to move. And I want to be surrounded with people who desire eagerly to go after the gifts of the Spirit. I love how Paul says, man, I hope all of you speak in tongues. I speak in tongues more than all of y'all. I love that. 
You know why? Because I feel like that's one of those things that most people are like, I don't know how I feel about that. And Paul's like, I'm gonna be bold. I'm just gonna say it. You're like, I don't know how this works. You don't have to, it's fine. Just don't quench it. Don't forbid it. Prophecy is great. So what's the takeaway? In love, we should strongly desire gifts of the spirit and prophesy. We should prophesy so we can strengthen, so that we can encourage, so that we can comfort our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is just hopefully getting you kind of, you your feet wet, just stepping into this just a little bit. And what you probably don't know is like, we, we try to do this just about every single week. We try to give some sort of words of encouragement. We try to build each other up. There's a question you have to ask yourself when you get ready to do this though, because I want you to practice. So I'm gonna give you a step one here, what you can do. First of all, you just position your heart in love. God, I wanna love people the way that you love them. Start praying that. God, I wanna love people the way that you love them. And then ask yourself, Lord, what are you trying to say to this person? What are you trying to say in this situation? And just stop for a minute and just allow for the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to you. If you've ever gone over and you say, can I, can I just pray with you? Maybe you're not hearing anything just yet. You're like, I don't really have anything for him. But if I, could, if I just lay hands on you, man, if I just put my hands on your shoulder and I start praying, I guarantee you the Lord will begin to download things for you to pray for. Like, I don't know why I'm feeling this, but I just feel like you need a, some rest in your life. I feel like the Lord wants to encourage you today to just to lean into him. You never know. The Holy Spirit in them might be longing to just wake something up inside of them to release us into something beautiful and good. So today when we're done, which is almost any minute now, I'm gonna stand right here. And if you feel like, man, I've had a hard time hearing from the Lord. If you feel like, man, I wanna be able to just receive from the Lord. I wanna be able to give prophetic gifts. Maybe, maybe you've had some blockages in your life that, man, I just, I've been hurt by this. If that's you, if you just need to just have just someone pray for you, that's gonna, I wanna do that for you today. I want you to come down here. I'm gonna pray for you. If you're sitting in here and you're like, man, I just, I've never really given my life to Jesus. Maybe you've been here walking through this for a while. I want you to come down and give your life to Jesus today. My brother, Joe, who stands up here so vulnerably and just tells people about doubt. You know, in, in the Bible, there's a whole section, there's a whole, whole piece that the Lord ordained and set up so that doubting Thomas would have to encounter the living Jesus after the resurrection. I love that the scriptures don't hide the one who doubted, but proclaimed it and set him up so that they could lean in and realize I'm not the only one that's doubting. And guess what doubt does? It takes you through that hard season and brings you out to the other side more fully developed in your faith than maybe anybody who, is, who maybe we're unwilling to really press in and doubt. Doubt has left people on the sideline for too long with a weak and, and immature faith. Doubt is what literally will take you to the depths. It makes you ask good questions. Never be afraid of your doubt because Jesus isn't afraid of it. Man, and if you were one of those, because that's what, uh, you talk about prophetic words today. That's the one right now today. If you ever feel like you're dead, Joe, I'm gonna have you pray over people today. You cool? So Joe's gonna stand over right here with me. If you have doubt in your faith and you want somebody just to pray with you to press in and on your doubt, Joe's gonna lay hands on you and pray. If I can get the prayer team, go ahead and come up here, just off to the sides here. And if the rest of you just stand up. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. And I hope some of you will just take that word and just work on it and work on it and memorize it and say, yes, Lord, I want all that you can give. I'm gonna pray over us and then I'm gonna walk down and I just wanna take a good time of prayer. So Holy Spirit, right now in this room, I just pray that you begin to soften our hearts. God, you are a God who overcomes. Today, I pray you set loose some people to walk through their doubt. Holy Spirit, I pray that you reach down and pull some people through their doubt. I pray that you would answer questions in our doubt. What I know is that in the midst of doubt, just like Thomas, what we need is the presence of God, so real, 
who gives us an opportunity to touch and to feel and to seek and to get the answers we desire. Holy Spirit is continuing to heal all over the place and we just know we wanna partner with you right now that healing is in this room, that healing is happening in our families. We wanna trust you in that. And Lord, I'm praying right now that people would be bold and come down so that we could lay hands and pray over them and that you would release our hearts and our minds into all that you have for us, that we would begin to truly believe and to seek and eagerly desire the gifts. Lord, wake us up, get us out of our sleep so that we can no longer have apathy, no longer just sitting on the sides, but God just fixing our eyes on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith, that Holy Spirit, we would say, yes, I want more, I want it all, that we no longer are afraid or ashamed, but God, we just release you and you get to have your way. You get to do what you want. Lord, this is your church, not ours. And we just submit to you in Jesus' name. And everyone says,